Hello everyone, we are uh, continuing our unit number 10, Keep Healthy, and I have decided to change a little bit the format of our work, so please let me know if you like this one better. I mean not reading the tasks, but listening to me. So just let me know whether you like it or not, okay? And I also wanted to thank everyone who was trying to catch up with the work and who has been working actually. I do appreciate all your efforts, believe me. So you probably uh, may guess that for our lesson you will need your gadget that even goes without saying. You will need also uh, something to write with and something to write on and our student's book and workbook, definitely. And to my mind, it will be easier for you if you start watching the video on your laptop or your PC and use your gadget uh, just doing the tasks. Okay, let's get started. Last week you read the text about burden on borrowed time about absolutely amazing woman Phoebe Snetzinger who uh, survived the cancer for a while and was very strong-willed. And actually I want to check how attentive you were reading this text. If you uh, want to know where we are, it's actually workbook, page 94, exercise 1. I will show you that later. Uh, so I want to check what you remember about this woman and about uh, her hobby, okay? Uh, so here are these sentences. You can see them here, you can see them in your workbook. So your task is to put them into the right order according to the text. I have actually told you that before, but once again, I recommend you to complete the task, to do the task in your workbook or your student's book at first, and then I always give you the link where you can check yourself. So please do it at first here, your workbook page 94, exercise one. So I hope you had no difficulties with this task. Now get your gadget ready because I will give you the code and you will be able to check yourself. So I hope that you are done in your workbook and you know how to scan this code. I'm sure you know. So please do it and uh, you, will, you will be directed uh, to ProProf test, ProProf exercise. Uh, so we both uh, will know how you have been doing. So, great! I think that we checked your memory about uh, the book and the amazing author of this book. And now I would like us to do a little bit of, uh, more reading. So, in your workbook on page 94, you can see a photo of an um, amazing dog. Yeah, And we are going to read the text about uh, this dog, about her actually. You can see that it's uh, Belle and uh, your task will be to complete exercises two and three. So first of all, I want you to understand how many operations Belle had and how many operations she still needs. And then you will have more specific questions. You have the code, so it will direct you to the exercise. Good luck. I hope that by now you know that uh, the answer to question number one is two and the answer to the question number two is zero actually. She doesn't need any more operations. Uh, and uh, I will uh, see the answers to other questions. Okay, so, so far so good. But I would like us to go to our student's book because I want us to do more reading. So we will have a lot of reading this week, will be very intensive, very focused on reading. So let's go to our student's book to page 96. So I hope that you can see this page, you can see these two texts, and below you can see the exercise that we are going to do. So just uh, again, uh, I recommend at first to do it in your student's book and then you will be uh, directed to the 
digital exercise. So good luck. So get your gadget ready and let's start. Here's your code, just scan it and complete the task, please. You have to decide whether the statement is about the text A or whether it is about text B. By the way, I hope that you have guessed that it is better if you pause the video while you're doing the task, yeah? So, you are experienced students and you know that uh, the text is not just like that there and we are going to go into more detail, yeah, after that. So, on, um, in your student's book, go please to page 97, there is exercise 1 and there are three sentences that have gaps. So, I would like to focus on these sentences. They are very important, believe me. So, let's have a look at these sentences. They will live for this moment for years. What did you put? Probably, they had been waiting for this moment for years. Good. Now, number two. The nine-year-old blah, on his own during a break and had not stayed with the other children. What did you put? The nine-year-old had been skiing on his own during a break and had not stayed with the other children. What about number three? Jack blah, 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 from a serious illness since he was born. Jack had been suffering from a serious illness since he was born. Good. Now, Let's look at these sentences critically and try to figure out what they have in common. Before we actually go on, I want you to watch two videos about the topic that we are going to work on. I hope they will be really helpful. So, let's watch. Welcome to English Grammar Spot. This tutorial is about the past perfect continuous. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to form a past perfect continuous and when to use a past perfect continuous. Now, let's get started. Take a look at these sentences. I have been working a lot. It had been snowing. They are both in the past perfect continuous tense. How do we form a past perfect continuous? We use the auxiliary verb to have, but we use the past simple form, so had. We use the past participle form of the verb to be, the base form of the verb and I and G. So for the singular forms, that is, I had been working all afternoon, you had been listening to the radio, he had been sweeping the floor, she had been spending a lot of money and it had been raining all week. For the plural forms, we had been playing computer games all night, you had been searching for a supermarket, and they had been watching the news all afternoon. We need to pay special attention to verbs that end in an E, such as live, make, close and wipe. These verbs drop their E. Take a look at the examples. I had been living there for quite some time. He had been making a lot of noise and they had been wiping the floor for over an hour. Let's have a look at the past perfect continuous in questions Again, we use had, we use been, the base form of the verb, and ing. For example, had she been talking about him? Had you been playing tennis? And had they been doing their job? For negations, we use the auxiliary verb to have and its past simple form, which is had, but we add not to it, contracting it into hadn't, and the past participle form of the verb to be, the base form of the verb and ing. I hadn't been listening to the news. She hadn't been waiting for you for over an hour and they hadn't been paying attention. Now let's have a look at when we use the past perfect continuous. We use the past perfect continuous for activities that started in the past but before something else in the past. For example, I had been traveling before I met her. So I started traveling in the past it lasted for some time and then I met a specific person. All these things were completed in the past. Another example is they had been working as a chauffeur before taking a job as a doorman. So first they worked as a chauffeur for quite some time and then they took another job. 
I thank you for your attention. For regular updates, please subscribe to youtube.com slash englishgrammarspot or go to www.englishgrammarspot.com. And now I think we can return to our student's book to the rule and actually complete it. So you've got three spots where you have to choose the right option. Do you have the same? Very well. So just like usually after the rule, we have a chance to work on that. So uh, in your student's book on page 97, you've got exercises two and uh, yeah two and three so please once again complete them in your students book and then get your gadget ready because i want to see how you're doing as well no surprises here's the code scan it and you will have a chance to show me how you are coping with the exercise so i hope you completed it and i can see it Welcome back and let's continue practicing. So we'll return to our workbook to page 91. Just as I said, workbook page 91. Should I say it once again that I expect you to do it in your workbook and then in a second you will have a code to show me how you are doing, okay? But before that, please do it in your workbook and then when you know the answers, you'll have a chance to improve on your mistakes. And this is what matters, remember. So here's the code, please scan it and you will be directed to the page in your, I mean, interactive page of your workbook, page 91. Well, I hope that you are doing well and I hope to see how you are doing. So, uh, we are going on. Remember about our sandwich. So, we are returning to our student's book. We are going to work with the text uh, in your student's book. The text is in your student's book on pages 98-99. There is a task, of course, and the task is about vocabulary, about the words. So I want you to do it. I want the photo of the page. And of course, I have a Quizlet for you on these words. So please be attentive and you are going to listen to this text. And every time I give you a chance to listen to the text, in return, you owe me a voice message where you are reading a paragraph from it. So I expect to get a paragraph from you. I want to hear you reading. So please, at first, listen to that and then 
Send me the voice message where you are reading that. Unit 10, page 98. Culture, exercise 2. Keeping healthy. Stories from around the world. Running for fun. Running regularly helps you keep fit. That's why millions of people run several days a week and regularly take part in races. Some runners combine the sport with doing something good for others. They collect money for their run and give it to a charity. Some charity runners run a full marathon dressed in a crazy costume to collect more money for their charity. Travis Snyder from the US had been thinking for some time about an idea for a fun run where professionals and amateurs could run together. In 2012, he organised the first colour run, the happiest 5k on the planet. What started with 6,000 participants in Phoenix, Arizona, is now held annually in many cities around the world with millions of runners. The idea is simple. You start wearing something white, and at every kilometre, people spray and paint you in different colours. 1k is yellow, 2k is blue, 3k is green, 4k is pink, a colour extravaganza. Why do people go on a colour run? Because it's healthy, fun and colourful, as one runner put it. A beautiful morning in the park. The scene you can see in this photo is something you will see in many parks in China. Big groups of people doing Tai Chi, slow, controlled movements of the arms and legs. These movements are very good for your health. They help to overcome stress, and people doing Tai Chi say it helps them to concentrate better and to feel happy and relaxed. On weekdays, you will often see elderly people doing Tai Chi, but at weekends, the parks are full of families, including children. They are all practising these elegant movements together. Ice swimming. Imagine it's minus 15 degrees Celsius outside on a sunny Saturday afternoon and you are somewhere in Russia or Finland. Would you rather see a film with a friend, go for a walk and enjoy the beautiful snow, or go for a swim in the nearby river? Not many of our readers would choose to go for a swim in such low temperatures, but in Russia, Finland and other countries, Ice swimming has been popular for centuries. Some people say it's very healthy because it improves blood circulation and strengthens the body's immune system. Doctors say these things may be true, but you have to be very brave to try it. And it's only for people who are already fit and healthy. So... I hope that you have completed the tasks, that you are okay with uh, the amount of reading we did, but believe me, it, if you worked on that, it was useful. And now I want you to work on the vocabulary. Yeah, we did it last week. We are going to do it again. So, first of all, vocabulary. So, get the gadget ready. Scan the code and you will have a chance to practice, to work on the words from this unit. Please do it and you remember that I recommend to do it three, four times, okay? Important part of this unit is grammar. And grammar is pretty tricky because we have been talking about present perfect and present perfect continuous. And I want you to practice that a little bit more. We can see uh, your uh, strong points and your weak points, but I want us to practice more, because practice makes perfect to remember about it. So, for the last time, get your gadget ready, because I have prepared a quiz for you, a quiz on these tensors. So, it will be uh, last task. I hope you like these quizzes. 
So let's enjoy and see how you have been doing. That will be an indicator of your work to both of us. So here's the code. Uh, supposedly, it will lead you to the quiz. Enjoy it! So, first of all, I want to thank you. If you have completed all the tasks and you are now at the end of the video, tired, but I hope happy and satisfied with your success. Uh, please let me know whether this lesson was easier or more difficult for you. I need to know. Maybe you liked it better when you could just read. Maybe you like it better now. Or maybe you're expecting us to meet on Skype or on Zoom. So definitely let me know what you prefer. Thank you for your work again. And I hope to see you, if not soon, but yeah, let's hope to, to meet soon, okay?